In the video side of Photoshop, you can animate layer styles. That is, you can have layer styles change over time. And this is just a super fun feature. You can have drop shadows change their length, change their direction. You can have bevel edges get deeper or shallower. You can change the colors of gradients, all kinds of things that you can do in layer styles. You can animate them, change them over time. So let me show you how to do that. We're just going to start from a blank slate here. So open up Photoshop. I want to make sure you're inside the motion workspace and bring in a video clip. I'm going to go over here and click this plus. I'm going to go get this time lapse one clip inside the digital juice stock footage folder inside the working files folder. There we go. Let's get that, bring that one in. I think that serves as a nice backdrop for the stuff we're going to do. Now I want to put something on top of there that I can apply layer styles to that will be effective. And usually that's something that's smaller than full frame size. So I could take a clip and I could scale it down. I could put some text there or a shape. I want to put text above there. So if I just take the type tool here and click up here like that, it's not going to put text above it. It's going to put text after this inside the same video group. So I'm going to press escape to get out of that. To put text above it, I need to make a new video group. So I go over here, add a new video group like that. And with it active and the playhead right there, now if I take the type tool and click here, it'll put text on a layer above this clip. And I'm going to type in some text here, like so. Press the enter key on the numeric keypad. Let's go get control or command T and we'll pull that down there and make it a fair bit larger. So it's obvious when we make some changes to it. There we go. Press the enter key on the numeric keypad again and we'll accept that. Right now there's no layer style applied to this and no animation yet. To get to the keyframes for layer styles, just open up this little disclosure triangle there or there. Either one will open it up. There are the various keyframes available for text. Notice that there's a keyframe here for transform. You don't have to convert text to a smart object to do transform. So for example, I click on that, have that be the starting keyframe. I go over here a little bit, do control or command T on it like so. I can change its size, change its position, rotate a little bit, and press the enter key and the numeric keypad to accept that, and that will animate. You can animate text directly there in terms of the transform properties right away. No need to convert it to a smart object. I'm going to delete those two keyframes here, so we're not working with that. So I just need to click on the word transform, and that highlights both the keyframes. Press the delete key, and those go away. And it goes back to whatever the present state was. So I'm going to go back to the beginning here a little bit. We'll go back to the type tool like that. There we go. Free transform. And then we'll close this down. I can make this a little bit longer, too. It doesn't have to be five seconds, which it is by default. Let's take it up about 10 seconds or so. There you go. You can always change the length of a still image or text like this or even shape. So now we're ready to apply layer styles to this and have them animate. So to do that again, we open it up like this. And there is the style toggle animation switch there. There's also a switch for text warp, which I'll cover in a different lesson. So let's talk about style here. I'm going to turn on keyframes for style just by clicking that little stopwatch. And now the keyframe is turned on for it. There's nothing on there. There's no style applied to that, which is fine. That just says the starting condition for this text is having no style applied to it. Let's pull the play in here a little bit, maybe a couple of seconds. Nothing's going to change, of course. But now I'm going to change the styles. And to do that, I go over to the text layer here. I just double click on this area over here next to the word text. That opens up the layer style dialog box. And let's just add a bunch of layer styles just to make it pretty obvious that we're messing with this. It doesn't have to be really attractive. We just want to make sure we see that you can do this. So there's bevel and emboss. Let's make it deeper, make it greater size like that. Pretty obvious that we've applied a bevel there. Let's add a stroke to it. Now, by default, that's three pixels in black. Let's change the color to something else, like a little purple. That'll be pretty obvious, right? There we go, a little purple there. And let's go down to drop shadow here. Give it a pretty hefty drop shadow. Pretty good distance there. Spread it out a bit. There you go. So we've added those three things now. May not be tasteful, but it's certainly obvious. Now we click OK, and that puts a keyframe there. We made the changes, and once we accepted them, it put a keyframe there because we changed something at a new time. So let's go back to the beginning here and play this and see what happens. And there you go, the styles come on gradually. I think that's just so cool that that happens like that. Let's hold these guys at this point now, a little bit later in the clip by clicking on this little diamond there, and that adds another keyframe that's equal to this one in terms of the properties that have been applied to it. So there's no change from the second to the third keyframe. Let's go a little bit farther in though and make a dramatic change here so you can see how it can change again. Let's go back and open up the layer styles again. Let's have the bevel be even greater in terms of its size, like so. Let's change the angle of the light here, like that, there you go. which also moves the shadow because we've got global light applied to it. Change the stroke color 
Is that cool? You can change the color too? Well, I'll make it green so you can't miss it. Click it there and make it larger so you really can't miss it. Ooh, really ugly. Okay. And the drop shadow will change the color of the drop shadow. What the heck? Let's make the color, you know, obviously different. There you go. And I also now want to add a pattern overlay. Now, pattern overlay is when you go from one pattern to the next, they don't change gradually. But this first one will come on gradually. The next one we apply will not. Let's just see how this works now. We'll click OK. There you go. Let's go back a bit here and see what happens. There you go. Things change. The colors change. The shadows change. And then that pattern overlay comes on as well. Let's go a little bit farther in here. The only thing I'm going to change now is the pattern overlay. So double click over here again. Change the pattern overlay to something else from this drop down list. That'll be pretty obvious there. Click OK. That adds a keyframe there because it's different. Now notice it's going to hold that other pattern and then it's just going to go bam, change to that one. So it's not a gradual process going from one to the next in the case of a pattern overlay. Okay, let's go a little bit farther here and go back here to our layer style dialog box and just uncheck everything. Off, 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 off. And you can see how you can go back to the original state. Here we go. Let's just try that again. Shifts immediately and then gradually all the layer styles are turned off. I think that is such a cool feature here inside Photoshop. Now we can do the same thing to a shape layer. I want to add a shape layer so that the text layer is above it and the shape layer is between the text and the background layer. Let's just see how that works. I'm going to go click on the shape tool here and drag a shape like this. What that's going to do is it's going to put the shape after this thing. But no big deal. We can fix that by taking the text layer here, dragging it above this one like so, and it's going to stay in position there. And then this rounded rectangle then slides over. So we've got that right there. I can extend it out too to the length of the text, like so. There we go. And we can do the same kind of thing for the rounded rectangle. Let's open it up there and take a look at it. You'll notice that it does not have a transform property associated with it as text did. This works like a typical video clip. If I want to animate the transform properties for a shape layer, I need to right click on it over here and say convert it to a smart object. And then that will then bring in the option of having transform properties. So I can have it, let's say, start from nothing. I'll go over here, turn on keyframes for transform. Do control T on it, like so, and do alt or option plus shift. Shrink it on down like to nothing, more or less. Then I can accept that and then bring it on over here. Control or command T on it again. And I can then hold on to alt or option then shift and bring it back. Something like that. And if I want to change the position a little bit, lift it up slightly like so. There you go. When I press enter, that'll accept it. And that transform action will happen there, just so you know how you can access the transform keyframes when you're working with shapes. But we're talking here about style. So we go down to the style stopwatch here, click on that. I want the style to start off a certain way, so I'm going to drag this thing a little bit to the left here. That'll be the starting point. I'm going to go over here to the left and make sure that the playhead is on top of that by navigating to it by clicking on that little triangle over there. And now I'm going to go to layer styles for this rectangle by double clicking over here. There we go. And let's give that guy. A bevel as well. And we're going to give it a gradient overlay here. Let's change the colors to the gradient. Let's just have this color, let's say, be blue, for example, like the sky. I have this one over here. White is good, I think, but we'll just make it a little bit bluish white. How about that? There we go. And then click OK for that. I'll have the angle be over here so that it goes left to right. Okay, add a drop shadow to that as well. Make it pretty big, something like that. Okay, and now when we expand this guy up, there it is like that. I think it'd be nice if it had some transparency to it, so I can just take this guy and right there, just change the transparency just like this without having to keyframe it, and just knock it down like that. There we go. And that's how you can then put on styles for this thing. Let's say I want the styles to change over time now. Now that I've got a keyframe there, I'm gonna keyframe it over here by just double clicking on it again and changing the gradient overlay to some other color, we'll say. Instead of blue, we'll have it be a different color. Maybe it'll say orange. The sky's changing colors, folks. There we go. Have this be orange as well, maybe lighter color orange. That works. And we can also change the drop shadow. The drop shadow a little more obvious. There we go, like that. Have the bevel and emboss change its direction like that again. Should change the shadow for the drop shadow as well, which we don't have to do that. We can turn off the global light and not have it be a global light for everything. But now that we've done that, we'll just accept the global light again. And then we'll say OK. And that will change this 
layer style for that background, for that shape as well, like this. And if it changes too fast, I can just move the keyframe a little over farther like that, and it'll take longer to make the change. Comes up in size, and it gradually changes, along with our text changing in the background as well. I want to show you one more thing. I want to show you how you can use preset styles. So I'm going to go to Window, click on Styles to open up that little panel. And right here, with that selected, I'm just going to click on a style like that. I'll put that style there. Go a little bit farther along like this. I'll click on, let's say, that style. A little bit farther along like this. Click on that style. You can use these guys, so these styles built in, and gradually go from one to the next. The little caveat here is that if they use something like a pattern in the background, then that will be a jump instead of a gradual change. It doesn't always work smoothly. It depends on the style that you select. So it's not necessarily going to be a smooth ride from one to the next, but you see that you can basically keyframe a style and jump to the next style, sometimes gradually going from one style to the next, but more frequently just sort of jumping from one style to the next. So there you go. I think you can see that the layer style animation possibilities are endless.